You are my choice for mating. But you are not mine. <laughs> We are talking about the movie Hundra, a 1983 fantasy movie that stars Laureen Landon. This one was directed by Matt Simba. The pair would actually go on to create uh, Yellow Hair and the Fortress of Gold in the following year. And uh, this one is very similar to a kind of Red Sonja style tale. This is the movie that I feel it can be most compared to. So basically Hundra is a Amazon style kind of warrior woman. And we learn at the beginning of the movie that her kind of tribe, purely made of, of women, are kind of, you know, out kind of peacefully living their lives. And one day, Hundra is out hunting. And during that time, they are attacked by, by men, basically, who ultimately destroy all of their village. For no real reason, it's got to be said, that other than just the fact that they destroyed it. But there you go. Hundra comes back to find out that all of her people have been killed. And uh, she goes off to try and, uh, you know, find out a new direction in her life. And she comes across this oracle who basically tells her that she's got to reproduce. So, uh, in a bizarre kind of almost um, a way that you wouldn't see coming, hundreds of minutes from then is to go and find a man that she can kind of, uh, you know, obviously reproduce with. But she's obviously had some reservations based on what's happened to her previously. So, they kind of, the, the last kind of two thirds of the movie ultimately is her in this kind of city. Um, you know, she meets this kind of guy who's a doctor who's kind of a little bit more of a gentleman than kind of the rest of the guys that she meets there. And obviously decides it's going to be him. He's going to be the lucky guy, along with kind of, you know, trying to kind of like fight this kind of particular uh, warlord who he kind of treats women like slaves. So there you go. That's your basic story. So what do we think about Hundra? So, um, yeah, this movie has weird tonal shifts as, as the movie progresses. But let's talk about really the, the first third of this movie, which is, um, I would say, the most serious third. And when I was watching this, it's been a long time since I've seen this, I was thinking this, this is not the kind of the campy films like Deathstalk or, or Amazons or Barbarian Queen. This movie is more kind of uh, more serious, takes itself more seriously. At least it did in the first act. Because that's quite brutal. We just see ultimately... You know, every, every single woman in, the, in this kind of village get kind of killed at the sword of these kind of guys. And then uh, the kind of the action set piece after that is essentially Hundra on the run. Um, and then facing down this kind of like this, this group of 16 um, horseback riding guys that are trying to kind of track her down and ultimately have this kind of this big um, kind of showdown with them. And I've got to say, that initial uh, part of the movie I thought was very well done. Uh, then the biggest name in this movie might actually not be the director or the, the star. It's probably the, the composer, uh, Ennio Morricone, actually does the kind of the, uh, the score here, of course. Um, somewhat of a famous composer, you might say. But I've got to say, is the music here is a little bit weak source. I've got to be, got to be honest with you, not, not his best work. But the first set of this movie is strong. The production value looks pretty good. The attacks on this kind of... Um, you know, this kind of female encampment actually looks somewhat brutal when these, you know, these people are getting killed and in somewhat of a, of a gruesome and uh, realistic manner. Now, Laureen Landon herself as Hundra, I, I have kind of mixed feelings about. Now, in doing this review, I did a little bit of research and apparently she did nearly all of her own stunts here. And I'm going to say some of them are fairly impressive. I mean, the fight scenes aren't brilliant. The choreography here is, you know, a little on the weaker side. But I've got to say, I think she did, she did a pretty good job of, of seeming like quite a kind of, um, you know, a capable woman within this kind of like the, the universe that this, kind of, this movie sets up. But, I mean, the acting isn't particularly strong. It also has to be pointed out that they actually re-recorded all of the lines from everyone in the entire film here. So, of course, the, what you're watching on screen feels a little disjointed with what you're hearing to a certain degree. But that's, you know, so it doesn't come across as a particularly uh, fantastic pack. It's not that there's loads of dialogue in this film, to be honest with you. But we do have, you know, maybe it's a little on the kind of the shakier side. The production value I thought was 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 pretty good though. So it, it, it kind of looks like they spent a, you know a reasonable amount of money on kind of set design, costumes, and stuff like that. When we get to our second act, it takes this kind of like this weird um, tonal shift, where it kind of almost goes into like a farcical kind of comedy routine, where we have Hundred in this city and she's kind of having um, 
capers trying to kind of escape this kind of like the, the, the city guards and they all seem to be completely inept and stuff like that and uh, like I've said it, it, it almost feels a little weird where the story goes because obviously you know hundreds of people have been wiped out by this kind of this group of guys yeah her next action is to try and go and find a guy to make it it just seems a little bit of an odd choice especially in this day and age obviously with the kind of the me too movement and all of that I mean this movie does have an attempt at um of, of kind of obviously showing kind of misogynistic one of what ways of thinking and even kind of goes as far as having a little bit of you know a little bit of a scene where um you know Hundra kind of rescues this kind of this group of women from this kind of like this you know OTT kind of disgusting guy uh, in, in thinking that she's, they're going to run away, and free, but they kind of all go back and help him, like that kind of victim um, men of mentality and stuff like that. Like I've said, I, I don't know if this was intentional, but it's certainly, looking at it these days, it kind of almost feels like it's kind of, making a little bit of a commentary on that sort of thing. Whether that is accidental or not, I do not know. Uh, so the second act of this movie is probably the weakest, um, because it, it just has this kind of like... Uh, this kind of almost comedy routine, and, and Morikan's music does not help in this one because it almost seems like a kind of comedy music, I've got to say. And then the last act we have uh, sort of Hundred really sort of coming to terms with what she wants to do, uh, and ultimately a bit more drama involved then because at this point she's got a child, uh, and you know the stakes are a little bit higher. But the story seems somewhat kind of irrelevant to a certain degree of this movie. It's, it's kind of a little bit weird. It just seems to happen upon these these kind of guys without any kind of. Uh, real purpose they just happen to be there um you know they just happen to be somewhat kind of you know these typical kind of like uh, barbarian -y, misogynistic type kind of guys but they're just never going just going there specifically for that purpose and um they generally don't do that much if i'm honest the other characters here are are particularly kind of underdeveloped um even our kind of our, our male love interest our male lead this guy who is this kind of you know, this doctor who originally actually t turns her away so he doesn't want to have kind of like just random sex and stuff like that in, um, in, in quite an amusing scene, I've got to say. Um, but uh, yeah, everyone else seems a little bit underdeveloped. Um, so this movie is a little bit kind of like all over the place to be honest. I, I really enjoyed the first third. I thought the second third was weak and the kind of the, the last third is a kind of a mixed bag. So it is kind of a, a, a you know, a, a kind of a tonal smorgasbord with no real kind of direction on the story. Um, you know, I think Lauren Landon does a pretty good job here, but she looks a little bit too kind of Barbie girl t to me, to be honest with you. Um, again, it's just a sign of, this is a time, a film of its time, so it's 1983, so we, in these days we didn't expect particularly kind of like realistic kind of um, stories in this kind of genre. Like I said, it reminds me most of Red Sonja. Um, out of any other kind of like fantasy movie, but I don't think this movie really is a, is a classic in any way. It doesn't really kind of like uh, even in a kind of a low budget um, way of thinking. It doesn't really, ever really kind of uh, become a leader of its pack amongst the kind of the small amount of uh, sword and sorcery films we had in the eighties. It's watchable. Uh, I said the production value is good. Lauren Landon is is you know is a likable kind of lead character, and although it's maybe she's kind of. Um, you know, a little bit too sort of dolly bird for what we're meant to be seeing. I think she does a good enough job here as a kind of a, you know, a fantasy archetype. But the story is just so weak and, uh, you know, it's just, it's just not very memorable ultimately. So I'll give this one a 4 out of 10. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.